Good day, everyone, and welcome to Social Selling Wednesday. We are here every Wednesday at 11 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Pacific. If you're over in the UK, as Michael is at uh, what time? Four, two? Four. 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 <laughs> two o'clock would put you probably in the middle of the uh, of, of the uh, Atlantic somewhere. So um, um, we're, we're here every Wednesday talking about social selling, LinkedIn, and this week we're going to be focusing a little more on Twitter. Uh, my name is Bob Woods. I am the Executive Vice President of Coaching and Training at Social Sales Link, as well as Social Business Strategist at People Links. Michael, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself next. Thank you, Bob. Great to be here. My name is Michael De Groot of StayingAliveUK.com and uh, training, uh, teaching, LinkedIn, social selling and producing whiteboard animation. Great to be here. Looking forward to talking Twitter. Very good. Ted? I'm Ted Pedromo, author of Ultimate Guide to LinkedIn for Business and Ultimate Guide to Twitter for Business. And I help people with their social media and online advertising. Very good, very good. So with that, um, let's get in to, uh, before we we start focusing on, on Twitter a little bit more, uh, we usually have a quick segment on things that we've noticed uh, changes wise, especially with, with LinkedIn, because LinkedIn's changing all the time, it seems like. Uh, but if anybody, anybody wants to bring up anything else, that's fine, go ahead. Uh, Michael, you said you had a couple things that you had wanted to bring up, so so why don't you go ahead and, uh, and get us rolling with that? Well, as we know, things are changing by the minute when it comes to LinkedIn, <laughs> yep. and I just want, I've literally something has changed again in the last like hour mm. um so what i noticed yesterday to begin with is in pending invitations mm -hmm. which is a really tough place to find by the way yes. but these are people that have invited you to connect on linkedin and you have to hover over the little person icon next to your picture then you'll see a drop down and you click on see all then there are these little cards <clears throat> where you can see the person's picture, their name, their headline, and underneath each card it says ignore or accept. Right. Well, until yesterday morning, you were able to respond to those people that had invited you, but perhaps had forgotten or just didn't use the facility to send you a personalized invite or suggest why they wanted to connect with you. So my method has been, right, you didn't send a personalized invitation. So before I accept, I'm going to ask you why you want to connect with me. I send a nice message mm -hmm. and I say, look, I'm curious um, what inspired you to connect with me. Mm -hmm. However, I, wanted, I was doing that yesterday with a few people and all of a sudden the little speech bubbles that appear top right on um, the, the, I can hear some feedback coming by the way, but um, top right corner on the card is these little speech bubbles or comment bubbles. And on every single card except one where somebody had personalized it the speech bubbles had gone, which meant I could not respond to them. Now, mm. for those of you who are active users within the LinkedIn app, that is exactly the same situation inside the app. If you get invitations inside the app or you look at them there, you cannot respond to them unless they have personalized the invitation. Mm. So, so this, this, I was obviously a bit disappointed about this, but it made sense, nevertheless, from a LinkedIn point of, view, point of view, to make sure that there was symmetry between the app and the desktop. Yeah, that part makes sense. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. However, it's not great to still have that situation. Yeah. Yep. However, um, things have changed again. So when I I've had a couple of new invites come in overnight that wanted to connect with me and only those two cards have got the speech bubbles on them. Every single other one has not. So they must have switched it back on yesterday and went, oh, something's gone wrong. So 
Bryn was suggesting yesterday because we were communicating on Slack about this. She said maybe this is a you know a bug, and she must have been right because they've switched it back on. It still means that I've still got another twenty four pending invitations mm -hmm. that that do not have the speech bubble on it, mm -hmm. but the two that came in overnight have. So all is okay, people. Don't fear. <laughs> it looks like it was just a glitch. Mm -hmm. I'll keep my eye on it, though. So yeah. I'll give you another update next week. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid to log in today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that. that's, that's one thing I noticed. Okay. Then uh, the second thing is when you go to my network and then connections, mm -hmm. you effectively go to your connections, let's call it database or connections list. Right. And that is automatically sorted in by recently added, right? Mm -hmm. So these are people that you have recently connected to or they've accepted your connection request. Now, this is a little bit tricky to explain, so let me see if I can get this right, just very carefully, step by step. Um, firstly, a change came in place earlier this year where they had removed the facility to tag people you were not connected to yet. Right. So, for example, just very briefly, if you wanted to connect to somebody but you didn't want to invite them yet, you could save them to your connections, then tag them as, mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, in your workflow, you could say invited, but not yet accepted, let's say, mm -hmm. and, and tag them that way, invite them, and then wait and see what happens and review this on a weekly basis. So they took away the facility to tag before you, you know, before, in fact, you can't save them anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's fine. So. Then they started messing around with the connections list because there was all sorts of different ways we could sort that page or list in mm -hmm. like location and by tags and various right. other things. They've, they've really kind of slimmed it down. So there's only very few ways that you can filter it. But you still got this by the recently added. Now I noticed that people that I've invited to connect to, and they haven't yet accepted, are in that list. Right now back in that list, yeah. Are back in that list with the icon, the LinkedIn icon, gray in gray rather than blue. Mm -hmm. And and the, the, the gift is you can now tag them again. So, yep. but it's still one step after. So it's right. not before you invite them, it's after you've invited them, you yep. can now tag them. I then looked back as far as I could of any that I hadn't that hadn't accepted yet, and literally, I can go back to people I invited last year and I can tag them. Wow! So, so they've enabled that feature now. How long it will be there for? It's still there today. So, how long <laughs> it will be there for? I have no idea. Yeah, let's see. It's it's but, still there, literally as of right now. But that's all we can guarantee is what's in the here and now when it comes to LinkedIn when we're talking about it. That's right. That's right. So that's that's where I'm at. That's what I've noticed, and mm -hmm. nothing else to report for for the time being. Hey, Michael, can you explain why you tag people for people don't don't a lot of people don't know about the tagging ability and how oh, you use it? Oh, yeah. The, the thing is, if when I started out on LinkedIn many, many moons ago and I started connecting with people, I didn't even know you could tag people until, mm -hmm. in fact, LinkedIn automatically tagged them based on your invitation. So if you said you belong to the same group, which no longer exists, but or you were a friend or you were a colleague or something, it automatically tagged it for you. Mm -hmm. And I think to a certain degree, it still maybe does that. I don't know. I don't think so. But anyway, it really is a great way to bring up people that you don't know how to find for starters. That's one way. So you could tag them as, let's say, a networking event I go to. You know, if you go to a networking breakfast, you can tag them with, I've met this person at that networking breakfast. Mm -hmm. So you can recall, you can go, oh, who was that I met at the networking breakfast? Let's look at all my contacts with that tag. 
or you can use it and where i've used it, and that's why i was so disappointed when you when they took away the tagging before you connected with someone i use as a workflow in terms of my prospecting uh, with people and people that i want to nurture to eventually have a deeper conversation with so i might so so taking down this kind of social selling funnel let's call it for want of it i don't like that mm -hmm. word but let's say right. um so i would give them tags based on invited not yet accepted mm -hmm. or accepted i sent a you know thank you email or so i put different tags depending on my workflow where i was at with those people so it was really easy to see mm -hmm. uh, where i was up to yeah so yeah, those power, the, uh, sorry no those are the two different ways right. that i use tagging and the power of tags is just incredible too i mean you could i mean there are so many different things you could do with with tags and it's too bad that they did take away some some of the things uh that were associated with it because there there were things that i trained on that are now gone that um that are that are really pretty sad but still it still is there to a certain extent and you still can work them in, into your workflow no matter what that looks like basically so um it's just it, it's really it's just it's up to your imagination and just how um just how well your sales process is uh thought out and and in terms of incorporating not only social selling but with um you know linkedin in, in particular and there yeah. is a way to tag on twitter too which is um which is which is something uh that that, that if i remember we'll, we'll we'll get into more in in this session too so um is uh ted um the the only thing i noticed this week was 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 the connections things ted ted do you have anything else to add no the connections thing and the ability to see who you recently connected with. Mm -hmm. I lost that for a while and now it's back. Cause that, that was frustrating. <laughs> Cause I didn't know who to send welcome messages to. You had to really right. sort through, you have to know exactly who you connected with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. And that's, um, I, I had actually turned off those, those notifications for a while in terms of email, but I've actually turned them back on as, as, as kind of a backup because, um, because, uh, you know, we, when, when you first sign up with, with, with LinkedIn, you get flooded with all kinds of messages and you tend to trim back and then you tend to trim back a little bit too far. But that's one thing that I have turned back on, back on just so that I have another source for those in case LinkedIn goes kablooey with, you know, things that they tend to go kablooey about basically. Right. Yeah, I agree. I, I've taken Bryn's tip, which is, you know, filtering all of the email messages that come from LinkedIn that says such and such has accepted your right. invitation to connect. Mm -hmm. So then I know it's effectively in a pending list there for me to make sure I go through and send them a welcome message of some kind or a, a call to action for a conversation. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay, so let's uh, let's let's push away from from LinkedIn unless there's something else that that we're missing, and um, and let's talk about Twitter now. So um, one of the things, or Twitter is, I, I I actually tend to think of it as being overlooked by social sellers, but I don't necessarily think that that's the case. Only because, um, and I just wrote about this again, but there was a study last year that came out from kite desk that um i'll just I'll, I'll read what i wrote yesterday among many other things it found that twitter was actually favored more by b2b salespeople than linkedin so the margin wasn't a wide one but it was there so out of the um i think they surveyed 2500 or 3000 b2b people or, or whatever I, I forget the exact number but 1301 salespeople said twitter was their number one go-to social platform while 1273 said linkedin was their top platform i couldn't find any more recent figures for this year but i imagine that linkedin and twitter are you know uh places may have changed a little bit but i think obviously that they are the two probably uh, top 
platforms probably by far for um, for B two B salespeople, which is what uh, most social sellers are are B two B salespeople. Do you do you find that surprising? Do you think that we don't um, concentrate on uh, on Twitter as as much as we should? Did they mention an age range in that study of who would be prefer Twitter versus LinkedIn? No, you know, uh, I don't. I wonder if that matters. That's actually a good question. I do know that um, LinkedIn came out with a study this year about about social selling uh, sales and platforms. And while they did not break out um, LinkedIn versus Twitter versus Facebook and all that stuff, they at least did mention, I mean, they kind of lumped everything together into one. And I'm going to see if I can find that millennial because they did say something about millennials in this study. Let me just, um, my millennials would be people under 40 would be Twitter users and people over yeah. 40 would be LinkedIn. <laughs> Yeah, you would you would definitely think that. So, so, so the headline on that page for a LinkedIn state of sales in 2016, uh, millennials encourage teams to adopt sales technology early and often. With the key finding, millennials are 33% more likely to use sales intelligence tools, which generate background and contact information on leads than industry peers aged 35 to 54. So it sounds like they're regarding millennials maybe as 34 years and below or, or, or something like that. So, um, so I mean, and, and, and I've seen a couple of other studies recently j just about how millennials make better salespeople, uh, you know, how they're using te technology more. And, and I think that that's really going, you know, that group is going to drive the adoption of not only social selling in general, but they're going to distinguish themselves more from, uh, you know, from that older guard who doesn't really understand or use this type of stuff as uh, th th these types of, of, of tools as much. So that yeah. may even drive um, further adoption more more quickly than than I certainly expect. Mm -hmm. And and what's your feeling or your sense where? corporate organizations are concerned with their, their employees using Twitter and talking about their organization and, and their sense of control around that. Because, I mean, apart yeah. from people saying bad things about their employer, that's mm -hmm. a whole other story. Right. But even to promote stuff about their company, I have a sense that companies want to control that in some way and want to prevent people from saying the wrong things or perhaps saying things that are confidential. Um, right. So well, I'm, I think that that's um, just, just personally, uh, especially with my work through, through people links. And one of the things that they're trying to promote now is, is going a little bit beyond social selling. And that's actually just more general employee engagement. And while, um, and while people links doesn't prevent people from, from posting to social media, it does provide a library of, of content that, uh, that companies can give their employees to share out on their own, essentially. So, you know, that gives employees kind of, uh, you know, what, what their companies think is cool to share for, for, for lack of a, of a better term, basically. So, I mean, I think that, you know, between that and just having strong um, employee policies about social and the use of social when they're commenting, uh, you know, via via their uh, when they're commenting about their company or whatever. I mean, however, that's worded. That's that's <clears throat> probably the best, at least from what I see that companies are going to be able to do about um, about employees and their uh, and and their social postings. The tools, that's, my, that, that's my view. The tools have come a long way because we used to do this, like, gosh, six or seven years ago. We had three yeah. of us doing the social media for a software company, and we had to, one account. So we had to coordinate who was saying what at what time. Uh, you know, Europe yeah. would take over, and then Australia would take over for their time zone. Mm -hmm. With the tools now, you can actually have, you can know exactly who's saying what. Right. And you can track it. Right. You can even schedule stuff out and things like that, yeah. too. So, um, 
although although not with uh, people links, but uh, other tools can can uh, let more of the um, social heavy people and 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 uh, social marketing departments do that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I I I completely get it and understand that there has to be a level of control by the marketing department you know towards the sales and marketing teams to make sure that we we control in some way what people are posting out there what makes me sad though is that when you do that it becomes very clear so i could be connected so let's say we're in the same let's say i'm a client and you guys I'm a buyer from from both of you, but both of you are now inside the kind of social media authorized postings, whatever schedule library, Mm -hmm. and you will pick an article, you know, the next one that comes up, post this out today or whenever. And you're posting it out there and I'm gonna see that article being posted by both of you. I mean, the chances of that happening, I know are slim, but it's possible that I'm gonna see it. And what what disappoints me to a degree is that that element of spontaneity where you want somebody's personality coming through, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. especially on something like Twitter. Right. And I, I still haven't mastered it. I've got to hold my hand up. I still haven't mastered it because I'm posting articles. The only thing that I've done different this year um, after kind of – looking at my own post and kind of going, oh, it, you know, I, my article is interesting, but I'm just sharing an article. So now, and that's why I'm pleased that the, you know, the, the Twitter space is going to improve. Mm-hmm. I'm putting a little comment with every single post. It takes more time for me to do that, but I'm putting a comment on my perspective on that article. So I've actually absorbed it, I've read it, I've maybe scanned it or, you know, I'm giving my perception on it. So, so for me, when it comes to Twitter specifically and social selling, I'd really like to make sure that people put their personality and their own stamp on stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's yeah, your I would view agree on that? that. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. Um, it's easier to actually do personality to a certain extent on LinkedIn than it is Twitter only because that <clears throat> only because that 140 character thing although although as as you correctly point, pointed out it's going to start getting a little easier to do that unfortunately the uh, the URL character count still counts against that 140 so it's it's not perfect but it's a heck of a lot better than it than it used to be <laughs> the one thing that I like about about sharing Twitter articles or sharing articles on Twitter now is that um, is that uh, you can get them to appear separately in their in their own window within the tweet now, and and that content there doesn't count against the 140. So um, so so there is a little bit better way to um, to build that personality. But just generally speaking, it's in in my opinion, it, it's easier to build personality on LinkedIn than it is uh, Twitter, basically. Mm. Some people are better at Twitter. I find some people are, yeah, without a doubt, they're really without good at engaging. Like Chris Brogan, I follow him, and he just talks to people all day long. Mm-hmm. And then she's like, "I have trouble talking to people on Twitter. I haven't really mastered that." It's hard I, work. It's, it must take yeah. a lot of effort. Yeah, in doing yeah that. it does. And um, I, I, I did do more of that when. And unfortunately, it's not a free product anymore. Uh, when Buffer released their product Respond or Get Respond by Buffer, mm-hmm. it was free. It now isn't free anymore, which is a real shame because I found that if I was mentioned in a tweet or then I was able to then engage with that conversation much easier mm-hmm. than I would have been able to inside mm-hmm. Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, although I'm finding where I'm, I mean, again, it, I'm experimenting like any of us, you know, I heard somebody say this morning, you know, we're all still learning. I mean, mm-hmm. we have, oh, yeah. every single day you learn something. Yeah. And I, 
I'd really like to see people engage more in conversation via mess the messenger or messages or direct message DMs on Twitter. Mm -hmm. I think my some of my best conversations have been kind of offline. Right. And I and I guess in some way it's a little bit easier because I know you can see the conversation thread inside Twitter, but sometimes a conversation privately is deeper and mm -hmm. people are not as conscious plus they're not they're not restricted to the amount of characters that they can use in right. in sending a direct message so yeah. i would if you know i would highly recommend from a social selling point of view that people use the direct messenger messaging mm -hmm. more more it's yeah. not used a lot it still isn't i get i get a lot of is it crowd fire messages? So, yeah, which I'm not a big fan of. I used to way, way back. Who was it? It was, it was a very, very early on automatic responder on Twitter, mm -hmm. right yep. at the beginning. And yeah, I, I used, used that, that and I stopped using it. And Same here. Mm -hmm. I'm still guilty of not messaging everybody that connects. Same here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But, if I do manage to, then I will send them a personalized direct message. Yep. And it's the same principle with LinkedIn, isn't it? But the yep. thing is, it's, it's all a bit faster on Twitter. Yeah. Much faster uh, on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. And therefore, you can get a little bit like, oh, my God, I've got. And the thing is, you get a lot of followers that are rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> and you never go, oh, yeah. God. Yeah. And so the, it's sometimes... And not wanting to put people off, it's a bit spammy at times. It can. Uh, mm -hmm. But so can LinkedIn. Anyway, that's that's my view. Direct message me, please. Yeah. So, so actually, uh, we've been talking about the changes, but I think that uh, we should let people know exactly what the changes are. Yeah. And our colleague Brent Tillman put put together an excellent article uh, over the weekend about the changes. So I'm just going to read directly from them, just so just so we're on the record with with exactly what's coming here. So Twitter changes um, direct messaging, as we said. Uh, Twitter has removed the character limit completely for direct messages. This is a huge opportunity for both social sellers and customer service representatives. The ability to get entire thoughts across, make conversations and building relationships that much more powerful and read there. Next point is replies. So when replying to a tweet, when you do the at and then the handle, um, that will no longer count towards the 140 characters. This can save you as much as 16 extra characters, which when you're talking about 140 characters, every single character counts yeah. there. Um, Next is media attachments. Currently, when you add attachments like photos, GIFs, photo, uh, videos, and polls, they can take up to 23 characters each. Uh, that is going away. So, um, so, so, so having a much more uh, rich experience besides just um, text is, uh, is going to become a reality pretty quick here on Twitter. Next one is quoting tweets. So um, when we rolled those out, we had all hoped for 140 characters, but we only received 116. Um, so um, so Twitter heard us, and soon we can quote with 140 characters all day long, which is excellent. Yeah. Um, so you can also retweet and quote yourself, which is a good point. So you can double your characters in any message you send. So you can tweet with your full characters, URL, images, et cetera, and then, and then just quote yourself with even more words, um, links, and even at mentions and uh, hashtags as well. And I agree with Bryn that that's a big win for social sellers here. Um, so, so, so can I stop you on that yes, one? Yes, please. Um, retweet and quote tweet yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that so if you've if you've done a tweet, mm -hmm. right, and you want to re resend it effectively right is that is that what you're saying you can you can send it out again by retweeting it and how is that yeah. going to how is that going to well we don't know yet until we see it what it's yeah. going to look like right yeah that's definitely going to be part of the thing i think that i mean you know just you know, just with this announcement, um, the the announcement's good, 
but I think that for all of us to come up with uh, with, with more strategies on it is, uh, you know, we're probably going to wait until we actually see the stuff in action, and then we start going, oh, you can do this, oh, you can do that, oh, you can do that. So um, because what would be really cool, and we might, if we have time, touch on it in terms of the Twitter analytics, which are pretty good. So if you have a tweet that's been particularly uh, popular in terms of retweets and likes, mm -hmm. you could retweet it again. You could send right. it out again really easily. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so that's a retweet. Mm -hmm. Quote tweet yourself, mm -hmm. right? Is that when you're replying to your own tweet? Okay, so... <laughs> is it the arrow, you know, the arrow that goes to the left, not the double arrow, which is the retweet. The quote tweet is the arrow going to the left. Right. So I'm going into my Twitter account right now, so it's a my tweet stream. So then um, yeah, so right now I can't retweet my own tweet, but I can, in a sense, quote the tweet right now just by typing uh just by entering in the the reply and then i could probably just type in anything in that lower box at that point so um so you can do that now so you can do that now but i think that um retweeting and quote tweet yourself is 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 essentially with that little retweet um icon there i'm i'm assuming that that means that that icon is going to become active within your own tweets yeah yeah so that so you could use that i mean that's i mean that's how I, you know until until we actually see this rolling out it's just kind of a guess at this point but that but i think that that's a fairly safe guess yeah, yeah. okay yeah. all right i'm i'm Okay, I look forward to seeing it. Yeah, right. Yeah, at the a moment, lot of this stuff is going to be. I mean, the 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 real secret sauce, if if you will, is, is going to is going to depend on the execution of all okay. of this stuff. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Which I mean, I mean, quite quite frankly, I've, you know, in 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 my mind, um, uh, developers who depend on the API are are probably going to have a little bit. Of a headache going into this because um because you know is all this going to be handled within the text of the tweet itself are are they going to have like a a separate tweet box now that's going to enable people you know to place things separately and in separate fields and things like that i mean that's all going to be very interesting going forward and that's probably a better subject for for a much more technical blab but um but but i think that even that stuff is is it's going to be interesting to see how all of that is actually handled yeah yeah and, and i i'd like to understand why I'm sorry to labor the point, but I'm, I'm raising it because of the sentence, which is big win for social sellers here. Mm -hmm. So just, why is that, is this retweet and quote tweet, why is that a big win for social sellers? So I guess um, the, the way that I read that is it'll just let us extend our message a little more as, as well as potentially, uh, I mean, you know, of, and, and by expand on message, I mean the actual text of that, as as well as potentially tag other people in there, put in um, hashtags, um, um, maybe even another photo, yeah. and, and and things like that. That's I mean, by reading her thing there, and actually I didn't think about it myself until she said it. But I think that that's a great point. That you know, um, as again, as long as this isn't overdone, I mean. You know, I could see people doing, you know, six quote tweets on one quote and everything else. And, you know, hopefully they will be shamed by the Twitter community <laughs> at that point, because that obviously wouldn't be the right thing to do. But, you know, maybe just adding on one tweet with, um, you know, maybe just do a retweet or a retweet or <laughs> quote tweet just once, um, you know, with that additional information that may be all you need to really to more effectively get a, a a point across um than with just one tweet basically 
Okay. Did that make so, sense? <laughs> well, the thing I picked up on that was the mentions. Right. Mm -hmm. So I like that idea mm -hmm. because we know that can be effective inside LinkedIn to get some conversations going. Yep. And particularly when you're sharing something. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know you can mention people, but if you can quote, tweet, and then mention people in that, Mm -hmm. bit, then that could that specifically so tactically that is a, a great thing for social sellers i agree yeah, yeah. Okay. but we, we we need to get Bryn up one week and talk about that a bit more what well how she sees that yeah definitely i would i would definitely agree with that uh, okay thank you sorry for interrupting oh no that's no good. no no that's no, that's that's what we're here for. Yeah. So <laughs> you think why would I want to retweet my own tweet? But now it does make sense. Yeah, yeah. now it makes sense. Yeah, it does. So um, yeah, so I guess just overall, all of these changes are 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 going to be good for for social sellers. It will it will help us, um, uh, you know, build that top of mind status. That uh, you know every. All that good stuff that we always preach about um, about social selling. It's just it, it's going to make Twitter that much more effective in in doing that. And and, and while I uh, while I don't want to say that it, it will bring more of a LinkedIn experience in because obviously it, it it won't do that. But I mean, just any opportunity to be able to commit more characters to the actual message as opposed to all this tech balderall, basically, I think is only a good thing. Right. Excellent. Yep. Okay. Thank you. So, any um, so while we're here, I have a tip or two about Twitter and social selling. Does does uh, any does anyone else want to start off with a uh, tip or two that, that that they have in mind specifically about Twitter with social selling? Oh, uh, you can share yours first, and then we can go. <laughs> You're on a roll. I you am prepared. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I, uh, somewhat, <laughs> somewhat. So, um, so actually, two things that I wanted to do. One, one is actually a strategy, and um, and 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 when I published this post uh, first last year, and I've and I've improved some things on it, but um, but but I called it a channeling strategy. So, in other words, using Twitter to actually bring people over to the LinkedIn profile, which will do a lot more selling basically. So that involves essentially a, a, a couple different things. One, making sure that your Twitter profile is is properly built out. And while we don't need to worry about, um, whoops, hello. We don't need to worry about doing uh, nearly as much work with the uh, Twitter profile as we do with, with the LinkedIn profile. It's still important to have the photo there, to have some type of uh, demonstrative banner up there, um, to have to have that little uh, text area really sell you in a uh, what's in it for me, meaning the person looking at, at the profile type of way. All of that stuff is still important. Um, so so that you can kind of transfer over from the uh, from the LinkedIn mentality over to Twitter. Um, the one big thing, though, is that is that uh, for this to, to, to really work for their link that they have within the profile to actually put in their LinkedIn um, uh, personal uh, profile address for that. So that so when they click on it, they're taking over to the LinkedIn profile, which will then do all of the heavy, if it's constructed properly, I should say, um, it will, um, We'll, we'll do all of the heavy social selling related lifting when it comes to uh, building more value, building top of mind presence and, and, and hopefully getting people to contact you directly off of the profile. So that, so that involves actually two things if you think, or three things if you think about it. One, quality Twitter content about what it is you do. Two, that, um, that Twitter profile, that properly constructed Twitter profile. And the third thing, and by far the most important thing, is to have that LinkedIn profile be social selling ready. So all of those three things happening together to where you're using your Twitter content to get people to your Twitter profile uh, linked over to your LinkedIn profile, that's like a one-way channel 
essentially. That's 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 how I view it. So so you're trying to get people over to your LinkedIn profile. And that, in my mind, is um, besides all of the separate benefits that Twitter brings, um, that's one of the that's that's one of the main reasons why you want to be on Twitter is to actually bring people over to your LinkedIn profile. I have a slightly okay. different approach. Yeah, please yeah. do. Yeah. This is why Ted wanted me to go that's first. Right. Okay, go ahead. No, I, <laughs> I'm amazed at how many people I should read your Twitter profile. Is it? Yeah. And I have a link in there yeah. that goes to my, to download a free chapter of my link, our Twitter book. Oh, that's great. And too. I probably get yeah, 10 absolutely. to 15 people a week that actually download that free chapter. So I, my focus with Twitter is to drive people to my website to build my email list. Mm -hmm. And then I engage them sure. and then get them over to LinkedIn and all the other social media sites. Sure. So I think that for, for people like us who have that separate publishing type of channel and everything, that's probably really good for us. But for these salespeople who are out there right. and they're just, you know, they're out there to sell a product and a service or, or things like that, they may want to uh, just try to channel people over a, a little more directly to LinkedIn. But if somebody can, can, can think of another reason why to put a different link in there as, as long as they're able to collect information somehow from it or build their, their, their brand and their presence somehow from it. I, you know, you know, I think that's great. Go for yeah, it. when I worked for the software company, we drove people to an opt-in page so they could download a report about mm -hmm. choosing a content management sure. system, choosing the best content management system for your business. And we built our email which, list. Uh, which I'm guessing might have been your content management system. I'm not, uh, yeah. So, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that, that is, that's definitely another great way to use that link. Yeah. But, but that Twitter profile, I think, is, it, you won't put as much work into it, but it's still very important. Yeah. So, so definitely put, put a proper amount of time into yeah. it. Mm. What do you think, Michael? Yeah, they, those things are really, really great suggestions. And, um, Interestingly enough, I'm, I'm getting more people now direct messaging me on Twitter to say, let's connect on LinkedIn as well. Yeah, I've had that before too. Yep. Or they've, they've put on their summary description, you know, let's connect on LinkedIn as well. So I've seen a lot of folks using Twitter as the channel to try and then get a deeper conversation going inside LinkedIn. Mm-hmm which I think is a great idea. I also believe that if you've been following somebody on, if you're following them on Twitter and they have followed you back, this is the key. As long as they right. follow you back, it will give you a great opener mm -hmm. because if they follow you back, they've had to go to your profile and click the plus follow whatever mm -hmm. link yep. uh, button. And mm -hmm. that's a great signal to jump on LinkedIn and go, right, are they there as well? Let's ask for a connection because it's an easy personalized message to say, we're connected on Twitter. Are you okay connecting here? Yeah. Yep. And I would wholeheartedly agree with mm -hmm. that. So that, that I find is a, a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, and then my, am I allowed a second one? Sure. Uh, yeah, sure. I think we could do that. I, and, and I'm actually going to ask you the question because you said, if I remember later on to mention this bit, which is about the tagging. Yeah. So why don't you, before I, because I think it's the same point. I hope it's the same point that I was going to bring up. So I'm going to ask you the question. So explain to our audience then the tagging philosophy inside Twitter. Okay. So really quick, you can, um, it's, it's a little bit more of a rudimentary thing just because Twitter in and of itself doesn't specifically have tagging, but you can set up lists within Twitter to where you can assign people um, to a specific list. And then, um, and then, so think of a particular list as like a tag, but just one tag um, because you can't put several, I mean, you could, I guess, potentially put, one person in, in several lists. But the key is here to make the lists 
private because if you make the list public and you have a big old list that says um, uh, potential customers, <laughs> <laughs> someone who is a competitor of yours and, and who is following you can look and go, Oh, I wonder who his potential customers are. And then, yeah. and then, and then go in for, uh, to that list itself at, at that point. So definitely make those lists private, but at the same time, you can use Twitter in, in, in a certain fashion, like LinkedIn tags to generate those lists of people to, to, to prospect to, to make, um, um, uh, a LinkedIn connection like partners to even potentially ask ask for connections on, on LinkedIn. I mean, once again, this gets into, you know, uh, let your imagination take you to, to where it will in terms of uh, how, um, what types of lists you want to make and how to populate th those lists. But there is that type of functionality within LinkedIn. You just kind of um, just kind of uh, got to uh, hack, you know, hack, quote, quote unquote, just a little bit to to bring it more into um, social selling purposes. I find it's also good to have public lists. Yes, public lists. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It kind of gets yeah, your that, name out there in front of so many more people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely not to take away from from public lists. Those are very valuable too. And I and I'm really bad at public lists. I, sh I should definitely make more of those. But uh, but uh, private lists can be very important yeah. in, in terms of networking and uh, and and finding prospects. And even you know if you have um, if you have a proposal at a company and uh, and and you want to kind of nurture it. Through to the close more more quickly, you can make a Twitter list of people within that company so that you know you're touching those people probably once a week, once every other week, depending on your sales cycle because you don't want to be too stalkerish, obviously. Right. But um, but uh, you know just to keep your name and your company on their radar as that um, as that uh, proposal is is working its way through through the company. I I I'm. That was the point I was going to make. Okay, so, good. So we were on the same wavelength. Excellent. So here's, here's where the kind of lists stroke tagging is beneficial. I totally agree with Ted mm -hmm. that if you make your list public and you give it a name that is a compliment, a compliment to the individual. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, superstars in social selling, let's mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. and you add them to the list or, you know, we've seen quite a few people add me to the blab blabbing lists and things. Mm -hmm. So that give, it makes the individual feel good about themselves <laughs> and they're going to go, oh, that's nice. I feel, you know, they get a shot of dopamine in their brain and they go, oh, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to know yeah. more about this person mm -hmm. because they've just given me a nice compliment and who, who am I there with? So you go and check out the list and you might subscribe to the list and right and and here is where at the end of the day and this is where it's easier for social sellers to do this in twitter compared to linkedin with the exception of sales navigator so let's mm -hmm. assume not everybody's got sales navigator most people don't because of course you can do this in sales navigator but on Twitter, if you've created a list, you can dive in and see what people are tweeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can like and retweet those tweets. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So again, I always say when you when people like, retweet, share your content or your comments or your whatever you're saying out there they do genuinely get a shot of dopamine in their mm -hmm. brain. And that's why social media works. <laughs> yeah. Because they want more of it, you know? Right. So really what goes in the brain is, oh, they love me. Yeah. They really love they go, me. Oh, <laughs> they love me. They really love me, you know? Yeah. And so, so from that point of view, if you've got a few folks in your list that you want to develop an engagement with and develop a little bit of trust yeah. with, then that's a great way to do that on Twitter in an easier way. I mean, obviously they need to be active. I've, I mean, I've wanted to, to look at people's tweets inside Twitter, but sometimes they're not even there. 
So yeah. I've started, I've started, private. I can find them on LinkedIn, connect with them on LinkedIn. Then I go to Twitter and go, they even got a Twitter handle, but they do nothing there at all. Yeah. And that's obviously when the road kind of ends. Yeah. You know? right. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Very good. So anyway. Yeah, very good. Uh, anything to uh, so, so we've gone over uh, channeling people over to LinkedIn for for a wide variety of reasons and uh, and using lists uh, for both tagging as well as um, as well as just promotion on on LinkedIn. I know there's a lot of others out out there. Ted, do you have um, do you have anything to add there? Well, I use Twitter more for broadcasting. I know I need to engage more. I I do like. 10% engagement, 90% broadcasting messages and sharing content. Yeah that's, yeah, that's probably me too. Yeah. So I'd like to get that to 60, 40 maybe, but there's mm -hmm. just not enough hours in the day to do it all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One thing I'd like to add, and I know we're, we're probably over time, but one thing I'd like to add, and that is you, you've hinted at it and I would like Bob and I'd like to just kind of, make it bigger and that's branding. Mm -hmm. So whatever you're doing on all your channels, on all your networks, whether it's LinkedIn, YouTube, I don't know, uh, uh, Twitter, <laughs> Pinterest, anywhere that you've got a channel, Google Plus, Facebook, mm -hmm. just make sure that the branding flows through and right. it's pretty much identical. So the profile mm -hmm. photo is identical. The header is identical. Yep. So it breeds familiar, familiar, I can't say the word. Familiarity, it makes people yeah. Familiar with your too. brand. Yep. <laughs> and so wherever they touch you, wherever they look, they go, oh, yeah, okay, I remember this guy because there's his photo, there's mm -hmm. his header. It yep. all looks the same wherever I look, and I become familiar with his brand. Yep. Consistent branding. Yeah, I would. Yeah, that's a great point. Yep. And, and even point. when you're an, even if you're an employee, you know, you're a salesperson, you've still got to develop your own brand personality and identity yep. Yep. across all these channels. So that's, Agreed. that's the last point for me today. Okay. <laughs> all right. Good. That, that sounds good. Well, um, I think with that, we are, uh, we're just about out of time. So I think that we're going to wrap things up for, for this session. Um, once again, we are here every Wednesday at 11 o'clock Eastern time in the U.S. Uh, feel free to join us. We always have chat open as well as generally speaking, a, a chat window open that you can participate in via uh, audio and or or and video if, if you want to share your face otherwise we can definitely do just audio as well so uh so say goodbye guys goodbye, goodbye. see you next week goodbye thanks for joining us everyone see you see you this time next week sure thanks everybody <laughs>